G'day and welcome to the 11th uh, live tasting with uh, Appalachian Hunter. Um, firstly, apologies for all the background noise. Uh, I've got a very noisy computer in the middle of a Windows update, which uh, of course coincides just as you happen to uh, start streaming. So hopefully that'll finish and shut itself off soon. So sorry about that. Um, also, there may be some background noise because once again, the weather here is terrible. Um, it's gone from rainy to rainy and windy and cold. So yeah, it's not great. Um, so we do have another special guest or the same special guest again. Um, I'm probably going to start listing her as a co-host. She's been on it so frequently. So, um, I had a few people ask to see her again, so just give me a moment. I want to say hello to all the good folks on Twitch. Say hello. Hello. This is Rosie. Rosie the rabbit. She doesn't do any wine tasting. She likes grass and water, but uh, yeah. So you may hear her rustling around in the background as she eats her grass. So yeah, um, put you back. You behave yourself, and I'll get into this wine tasting. Just get my headphones back on. I uh, hope you've all had a good week. Uh, it's as I said, it's been real wild here in Newcastle uh, and in the Hunter Valley. Uh, the uh, I mean, after not having rain for a decade, we've had two solid years of rain and um, starting to get a bit sick of it. Um, now, in Five years time will be complaining that we haven't had any rain for another for five years and uh, we're having to go into water restrictions uh, and all the farmers are complaining that there's no water but uh, until we get to that point yeah um, gets a bit sucky anyway welcome thanks very much for coming today uh, it's nothing in the chat so far so that's fine uh, so Quick introduction uh, for those that don't know me. Uh, my name is Jeffrey. Uh, I, by luck of birth, uh, live just down the road, about 30 minutes away from one of the premier wine regions of the world, uh, the Hunter Valley. Uh, and uh, I never really appreciated that until uh, during lockdown, uh, COVID 2020 lockdown. Uh, I really took a deep dive into wine and uh, yeah, started to sort of want to learn about the area that I grew up with just up the road. Um, so yeah, that's where we are here. Uh, and as I've grown to appreciate what I have, I want to share that with the world. Uh, that's basically why we're here. Uh, and today is a great example of that. Um, it's a, uh, a wine that is synonymous with the Hunter Valley, um, you know, in terms of varietal, uh, and the winemaker is passionate about that and wanting to, uh, to show the world the best that, uh, they can get out of that varietal. Um, so without further ado, um, today we are drinking or tasting the Thomas Wines 2021 Synergy Semillon. Um, so we're doing it a little differently. Uh, so normally when I taste a wine uh, on the channel, uh, it's a wine that I either haven't, ta haven't tasted before or haven't tasted in a long time. Um, so that I can come at it fresh. Um, but, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's different today. Uh, the reason for that is I was at the Artisanal Cellars, which is a bottle shop here in Newcastle. That's an offy for people in the UK and Ireland, uh, off-license premises, uh, to 
join in a tasting that they had there. So they had uh, the Synergy range from uh, Thomas Wines, uh, the Synergy Shiraz, and the Synergy Semillon to taste. And I'm like, free wine? Why not? Uh, so uh, went in, had a taste, and loved this Semillon. So uh, it was just something that I just wanted to share with you guys. I think it's a fantastic wine. So whilst I'm not doing this uh, fresh, hello to the uh, New South Wales police. <laughs> um, it's going to be one of those days, isn't it? Um, so yeah, I just wanted to share it with you. I think it's a great wine, and uh, it's and I'm really digging what. Uh, Andrew Thomas, the winemaker uh, responsible for the wine, uh, is doing. Uh, so uh, I want to share that with you guys. Um, so first things first, let's take a look at the details. Uh, you can see up here in the top right, uh, it's 2021 Semyon. The 2022 Semyon has been released. Uh, so there's still some of the 2021 around in bottle shops uh, if you want to pick some up. Um, don't think it's available online through their website. The 2022 is now available online but um, I imagine it's pretty similar, but it could be a difference, and we'll get into that uh, later on. Uh, so as you can see, uh, Semyon varietal uh, from the Colvin region, the Hunter Valley, uh, it's quite low in terms of alcohol. It's only 11.5%, so most still wines that you'll get um, uh, range between sort of 11 and 15%. Um, so as you can see, right at the bottom of that scale, not a lot of alcohol in here uh, which for a lot of people would be a surprise like a lot of people sort of associate Australian wine with just being big strong alcohol if you want to get drunk on the cheap Australian wine so this is not it um, I mean look you can still get drunk off at 11 and a half percent wine but um, you've got to make more of an investment uh, in time and effort to do so uh, in terms of investment, uh, this wine, reasonably priced, uh, Australian $22 for the bottle. Uh, you're looking about, at the time of filming, uh, about $15 US, 14 euro, uh, 12 pounds, or 120 Hong Kong dollars. Um, obviously with VAT, taxes and stuff on top of that, so, uh, but it still gives you an idea of price point. So we're not talking about a really expensive wine here. Um, Bottle weight, uh, 1,209 grams unopened, uh, so that's 459 grams, which if we have a look at the, uh, the weight chart here, uh, you can see it's actually the lightest bottle uh, that we've had uh, since we started uh, this channel. Uh, and by a considerable margin, I mean, that's what, 50 grams, 10% of, uh, of the bottle weight, basically. Um, so 16.9, 16.19 ounces uh, for you uh, in the old scale. Um, so yes, yeah, it's, it's a chunk of glass not in this bottle. Um, and it doesn't feel like it. Like you pick it up and it just feels like a wine bottle. Um, you don't really notice that 50 grams, but I mean, you do the math. I mean, 50 grams per bottle, I mean, across a 12 case bottle. I mean, that's 600 grams. I mean, across pallets and pallets, you're talking thousands of kilograms of weight saved, both in glass and in shipping costs. Uh, fuel and energy to produce the glass, ship the glass. Um, yeah, uh, it all adds up. Uh, and uh, in a time when our climate is obviously changing, um, making savings where we can uh, is very much to be applauded. Um, Andrew Thomas, I've been following him on the winemaker. I've been following him on Twitter for a while now. He seems very um, interested in uh, climate uh, and its effects on vineyards and wines. And so it's nice to see that being reflected in their choice of glass uh, to put the, uh, the wine in. So um, kudos to them for that. Um, let's take a look at the bottle. Um, it's just, it's really interesting. It's a great design. Uh, very classic um just one single wraparound label so it's just the one piece um with uh, i'm guessing that's andrew's signature on the front there i'm hoping that's not the one that he signs documents with because well uh, that could be a bit awkward um 
But uh, reading off here, Synergy, Semyon, 2021, Vineyard Selection, Hunter Valley, 750 milliliters. There's quite a little bit of a blurb on the back um, that goes into what, uh, what this is. Uh, so Thomas Wines based in the heart of the Colvin region uh, on Hermitage Road, um, or Hermitage as we say here in Australia. Um, yeah. No, I love it. I, I really like their, their labeling. I think it's very elegant. Um, what's fascinating though is that the, the, the paper, well, the, the labeling material that they use, it's almost like a paper because you can start to see even now, it's been out of the fridge now for about 10 minutes and the bottle is starting to sweat. You can see there's a moisture on the bottle and that goes on to the label. You can see that change, the discoloration, the change in color. So it's a really, really elegant label. Um, love it. Uh, as you can see, Stelvin screw cap, as it is for most uh, Australian wine. Um, so yeah, beautiful bottle. Um, let's get into it. I have not had wine basically all week, I don't think. So Wednesday lunchtime is as good a time as any to have a first glass. Uh, it's a nice generous pour there, Jeffrey. So uh, to taste this wine, as we always do, we're going to use uh, the WSET level two uh, systematic approach to tasting. Uh, for those that don't know, WSET is a Wine and Spirit Education Trust dedicated to uh, increasing knowledge of uh, wine and uh, liquor products around the world. It's based in London. Uh, they run uh, courses. Uh, I've completed the first level course, level one course. Uh, currently in the process of studying for level two and that's part of what this is about. It's practice for me to be able to taste and to learn all, all that I need to learn to get to the level two exam. Um, so we're going to use that. That's what our grid over here is. And uh, we'll um, get into it. So when we're tasting wine, uh, first thing we look at the details. We've gone through all that. Uh, we've marked off uh, the varietal here is a straight semion, and the first thing we do is we look at the color. So we have our trusty tasting board. Uh, when you're tasting uh, and, and evaluating the appearance of wine, uh, you want to have a, a, a nice clear white background. Uh, and so let's start. Let's get into it. And you can see there if I hold that up to the camera, very pale. Um, probably need more light in here. It's probably a bit dark, but you can sort of see it's yeah, it's it's quite pale. Um, almost like a like a lemon color. It's yeah. Um, so we'll go through our grid here. It's a pale intensity. The color is white. Obviously, uh, the hue is definitely lemon. Uh, and probably even sort of a pale lemon, like it's really, really pale. Um, and that's it for the appearance. So we have judged the appearance. Um, it smells delicious, but I'm going to put that down. I'm going to hold off for a second. I'll put my appearance board away uh, and tell you a little bit about the wine. And the winemaker. Um, so, as I said, the uh, the gentleman's name is Andrew Thomas. Uh, he is a winemaker, been in the Hunter Valley for a long time now. Um, he probably hate me saying that. Um, it's only been a couple of years, no doubt. Um, but uh, so he comes from a wine background. His father, uh, Wayne uh, Thomas, was a very much a winemaker of note uh, in the McLaren Vale area of South Australia. Um, so he had uh, a long experience in a number of wineries and started his own winery. Um, sadly passed away in 2007, I think. Um, but uh, yeah, very, very renowned winemaker. And uh, Andrew followed his dad into the field. Um, rather than 
staying in the McLaren Vale and probably could have uh, done that uh, and carried on the uh, the family heritage there. Uh, moved to the Hunter Valley uh, and decided to learn from the best. And by the best, I mean uh, Murray Tyrrell, uh, who is a legend uh, of the Hunter Valley wine industry, uh, responsible for the uh, growth of uh, Tyrrell's winery. Uh, so we tasted Tyrrell's uh, single vineyard, Stevens Vineyard uh, Shiraz uh, a few weeks ago. Uh, I can't remember what week that was now. Um, oh wow, it was a while ago, week three. So it's been a while. Uh, so uh, yeah, go back on to our YouTube channel. It won't be on Twitch anymore, um, but uh, go and have a look at that. Um, it's um, beautiful wine. Uh, so, uh, Andrew spent 13 years at Tyrrell's, um, spent some time overseas, uh, California, uh, Europe, uh, and then came back to the Hunter Valley and decided, I'm going to start my own thing. Uh, so Thomas Wines was born uh, in 1997. Uh, so they've been around for a while, as I said. Um, and Andrew's singular focus is on the two varietals that the Hunter Valley is renowned for. Uh, Semyon, which we've got here, and Shiraz. Um, and I, I love that. I applaud that. I, it's, it's always that question of, do you become a master of one thing, or in this instance two, or do you become a jack of all trades? Um, and me, I'm a jack of all trades. I'm right on a pub trivia challenge because I am entirely trivial. I know a little bit about lots. Um, Andrew's gone the other way. He knows lots about, well, I won't say little things, but knows a lot, everything there is to know about uh, Hunter Shiraz and Hunter Semyon. Um, and that's expressed in the wines. Um, and we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, it's um, yeah, I, I love it. I think it's I think it's a fantastic idea. Um, there's a great quote on the website, um, and I'm going to be generous and say that it came from Andrew and not his marketing person. Um, but uh, the quote goes: uh, <clears throat> Each wine is destined to showcase its unique single, unique vineyard signature, and express a real sense of place. Um, and I'm all for that. Um, different people have different views on wine. Obviously, um, my view is that wine is at its best when it tastes like the place that it's from. Um, to use the wanky wine term, it expresses its terroir. Um, but basically, you can taste where it's from. Um, wine at its best for me is when you taste the wine you smell the wine and it takes you to the place where it was you're sitting there in your land room or in your office at 2 a.m in the morning and you have a sip and you're instantly transported to france or to um yeah it's um that's that's what i want and even if that place is just 30 minutes up the road in the Hunter Valley, that's what I want out of the wine. Uh, just got a question here in chat. Do you believe in screw top wines? Absolutely. Um, technically speaking, they are vastly, the screw top Stelvin enclosure is a vastly superior technology in every way to cork. Now, I love the romance of taking a cork out, um, but um, yeah. Uh, it's um, the screw cap technically superior in every way to a cork even fake corks yeah um, but the other thing is the fact that most wine in Australia like the vast majority of Australian wine um, are, are stored in uh, screw cap bottles um, and thoughts on ageing in wine to be perfectly honest I don't know that's not something that I don't drink aged wine. I don't have a cellar, um, and I don't have the money to be buying aged wine. Uh, so I like the 
vast majority of the population, I think, um, have um, this go to the bottle shop, buy a bottle, drink it. Um, and so, yeah, look, for, for the po percentage of the population that has uh, uh, the, the, both the desire, the patience, and the, uh, the place to store wine and cellar it, whether screw caps are suitable for that, I don't know. Um, I won't pretend to know, but, um, but yeah, thank you for the questions. Um, all right. So back to where we were, the, uh, terroir, the wine that takes you to a place where it was actually from, um, look, it's, um, that's what I want out of a wine. Some people may not, some people want lots of intervention in wine. They want to taste different things and particular things. Um, but for me, I want that journey. I want to be taken on a journey to a place where the wine comes from. Um, and uh, I think uh, that's Andrew and I are, are one mind of that. Uh, sorry, there's another question there. So, uh, snorking it up. <laughs> Thank you very much for the questions. Uh, average price for wine. For me, uh, daily drinking uh, between sort of, I guess, 15 and, and $25 Australian. Um, so that's probably going to be sort of 10 to, uh, 25 US dollars. Um, I'm not exactly sure where you're from. Um, let me know. Um, but that's sort of, um, rough sort of price that I'd pay for an average bottle. Uh, I'll push the boat out and buy a really nice bottle of wine. Um, but, um, that's sort of, uh, where I sort of sit. Most of the wines that we tasted on, um, uh, the channel here. Uh, I think the cheapest was about sort of fifteen dollars. The most expensive is about forty-five dollars. So yeah, so welcome from the USA. Uh, thanks for joining us. So let's um, let's smell it, shall we? Um, oh, it smells good. All right. So going through the grid here, we've got um, our nose tasting here. So nose intensity. Light, medium, pronounced. Mm, that would be, I'm gonna go on medium. Uh, no, Hunter Valley, Hunter Valley is known for two varietals. One of this, Semyon and Shiraz. Uh, so Semyon, if you haven't tried it before, stick with us and we'll go through it. Uh, Hunter Valley Shiraz is very different from what um, most people would think of Australian Shiraz. So a lot of people think of Australian Shiraz as being really strong, full-bodied, fruity, really high alcohol. Uh, those wines uh, typified by uh, well, from Barossa Valley in South Australia, uh, Penfolds Grange uh, is sort of the, the one that people have heard of. Um, really strong, bold, high alcohol, um, and sort of everything around that. And that's great. There's a place for that. I love them. Uh, Hunter Valley Shiraz Hura is very different. Uh, and the way that I'd sort of describe it is more Pinot. It's a sort of medium body, uh, spicy, lower alcohol, um, and delicious. Uh, more fruit sort of forward uh, than, but um, more restrained, I think. Um, so uh, absolutely pick it up if you can. So back to this, floral aroma characteristics. Floral, I said it there, uh, citrus, which uh, Semyon is renowned for. Um, now this is a very young Semyon. This is 2021 and Semyon is in France, where it comes from, it's a blending grape. Very rarely will you see Semillon by itself in a bottle. Uh, the only sort of real exception to that is uh, as a dessert wine from uh, Sontanez. Um, they'll do a straight Semillon, but it's a dessert wine. It's a sweet wine, uh, not table wine like this. Um, and was very much always seen as a blending grape until the Hunter Valley planted a lot of it and made it. 
and gave it to the world as aged Semyon, uh, which in the bottle, uh, and even more so in the cask, ages beautifully. Uh, and you get um, these creamy, spelt, lovely, um, uh, not, not a lot of oak. Um, you can oak it, um, but uh, it's, um, yeah, it's just, it ages spectacularly. And it's just because of the particular terroir of the Hunter Valley. Uh, it's warm, humid, uh, some stonkingly hot days, um, but a reasonably short growing period. Um, our vintage here in the Hunter Valley uh, starts in January, whereas most of them, or sort of January, end of January, start of February, whereas most of Australia sort of much later, uh, later February uh, into April. Uh, so, yeah, Hunter Valley Semyon. But this is a very young one, as I said, so it's 2021. Uh, only been in the bottle for a short period of time, and uh, it's not going to have all the uh, ex uh, expression that we'd expect of a an aged Semyon. But let's get back into it. Definitely that lemon. A little bit of lime. It's almost like a, let's say grass, like a green cut grass, which there's been plenty of around here because the grass has been growing nonstop with all the rain and the sunshine. It's, it's been incredible. Um, so we're gonna mark off herbaceous fruit there. There's a, like a, I'm gonna say green fruit. Like a pear, like a underripe pear. Um, not getting any indications of having been oaked. Um, no vanilla or, or butter, which you normally sort of get from from an oak. I should say that I. I, this is not, I'm not a professional. I, I'm an amateur. I don't have the best nose. I don't have the best palate. Hmm. No faults. There's a, there's an earthiness to it as well though. Um, like a soil Red soil. Now I don't know which vineyards these come from. Um, we'll get into that in a minute. I'm going to mark earth on there because uh, there is a hint of soil. Um, wines are aged. Uh, they're bottled reasonably quickly. So this is yeah, 2021. The 22 vintage um, will go into bottles soon. Uh, it's not not very long uh, in fermentation and in tanks as I understand it um, and it just ages in the bottle um, and that's my understanding of it um, and yeah it just just yeah um, transforms from a pretty zippy pretty lean citrusy uh, wine to just this gorgeous sort of mellowed complex sort of wine. I've got some some 2013 uh, it's, uh, sitting in the, the wine cabinet um, and uh, if you want to go back and have a look uh, the first week, uh, it's on the videos on YouTube uh, 20, week one Drayton's Semyon uh, I think it was a 2016 um, and that's uh, just starting to really sort of show its age so you'll see the difference between that and this one particularly in the colour if nothing else um, so just comes with time the, 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 the sense of palette absolutely um, yeah uh, and thank you um, but uh, it's all about practice and that's part of what this is about so thank you for joining me along the journey alright uh, so let's talk about Simeon we've done a little bit of it um, but um, for those that um yeah, um, don't know about Semyon? I'll give you a bit of history. Uh, so it's, um, 
we call it a white grape, um, but uh, it is in fact a very golden color when it comes off. Um, it, uh, I was really surprised at the color of how it comes in. Uh, oh, you're in Napa. Hi, and welcome. Um, it, um, as I said, it's very rarely bottled as a single variety out of France. Uh, it comes from France originally, but um, yeah, very rarely will you see it as a single varietal. Um, and mainly for the fact that um, grown in the French areas, uh, it just doesn't have the, the, the same acidity that you get out of uh, a Hunter Semillon. Um, so, yeah. Um, this is it. You know what? I'm sick of this. I'm going to taste it. All right, here we go. Bring our, bring our palate up on the grid. Oh, it's delicious. And still going on. And still going on. Uh, so we know that the palate is long. Uh, so let's go through the sweetness. This is a dry wine. Uh, acidity. So for people who don't know about wine, acidity is... Um, it doesn't sound like a great thing, but acid is something that we want, in particular in certain wines, and particularly white wines. It's that sense that makes your mouth water. Um, and it gives you that refreshing sort of, oh, I want more of that. Um, and this is, I'm gonna say medium, but it's between medium and high. Um, it's, uh, there's still, yeah. To be honest, I expected a little bit more acid. Um, but I think part of that is the fact that because the the flavour just keeps going, it's um, yeah. Maybe I might be misreading that. Uh, tannin levels, this is a white wine, so there is no tannin. Uh, alcohol, uh, I mean, we already know that uh, it's a low alcohol, but uh, the way we test that... You have that breath out at the end, and if there's any sort of burning sensation, at the back of your throat, that'll um, that'll indicate the presence of alcohol. Now, as I said, we already know this is only eleven and a half percent, so there's not a lot of alcohol. But to be perfectly honest, there's nothing there. Like um, you wouldn't know that you're drinking alcohol. Um, mm. body so this is how it feels in the mouth and I'm going to say that's a medium it's um tr half I, I guess sort of between light and medium um and that's something that develops over time uh, with age, uh, with semion. Uh, the body sort of increases. I'm gonna, I'm gonna call it medium, um, but uh, sort of it's, yeah, between that light and medium. Um, a weaker Chardonnay or a light Chardonnay? Um, yes. Um, in that, uh, the Chardonnay, uh, the issue with Chardonnay is that typically outside of uh, Chablis, um, Chardonnay gets very heavily oaked, um, and not so much anymore, but, uh, sometimes you just don't get that expression of what Chardonnay actually is. Um, 
but yeah, that's probably not a bad way to, it's, so it's not a Pinot Grigio, um, it's not that light, but it's sort of, yeah, body-wise, sort of somewhere in between sort of a, a Chardonnay and a, and a Pinot. Um, I mean, as you can see, I mean, the colour is just, yeah, um, and you could, I can imagine people would sort of blind taste in this sort of go, oh, in the glass, that looks like a, a Pinot. Um, and, or a cider, yeah. Um, it's, um, yeah, it's, um, but the thing is the fact that on the nose it's just entirely different and in the mouth it just tastes nothing like Pinot. There's so much more flavour and so much more uh, aroma. Um, speaking of flavour, I'm going to go medium. It's a solid medium. It's not overwhelming, but you can definitely taste the fruit there. Um, definitely that citrus. Uh, and not just the lemon. So on the palate, um, there's more of a lime as well. There's definitely the, the lemon, but on the nose, it probably is the lime. I just couldn't smell it before. But, um, sorry, phone going off, it's always a way. I told you it's going to be one of those days. Um, mm. So that white fruit, that pear, um, like a really crisp green apple as well. Um, like a really fresh, crisp, um, uh, Granny Smith apple, just delicious. I am getting a little of that, that earth that uh, I was saying about on the nose, and it reminds me of the uh, are you being involved, are you Rosie? Nice. Um, on the nose, it sort of said it sort of said had an earthy quality to it. Um, definitely in the mouth, it has uh, what I'd sort of say is the red ochre soil that is uh, part of the Hunter Valley soil profile. Um, I, I I could just be imagining it. I to be to be honest, I don't know where uh, in the valley this one. The grapes come from. We'll get to that in a second, um, but I can definitely so going back to the bottle um, because it's cool. It's been the wine's been out now for about forty five minutes. Um, in the glass, it's it was quite warm. Uh, back from the bottle when it's chilled. Um, much more muted flavors um, so this is definitely wine that opens up a lot when it warms up um, but um, yeah I can definitely the sense memory that's working for me is that um, that red ochre soil um, again I don't know where it's uh, it's grown in the valley but we'll have a look at that in a sec in terms of finish, it's long. Like it's, I'm still tasting uh, and delicious. Um, yeah. Uh, in terms of quality, um, for the price, I'm going very good. This is this is really really for twenty two dollars Australian a bottle. This is great value and it's part of the reason why I wanted to share it as I said uh, I tasted this at a tasting which is unusual for the channel I don't I normally try and go uh, sight unseen um, or having not seen it for a very long time and uh, yeah it's um, but it, it, I tasted it 
Uh, unfortunately, uh, Andrew, the winemaker, wasn't there at the time when I tasted it. I went the day before. Um, but, um, yeah, it's um, delicious. And, and I really wanted to share it with you. It's, it's zippy. It's got... I <laughs> When I tasted it, I thought it had more acid than it's showing here. Um, but maybe that's just my palate. I haven't eaten today. Um, so there's nothing on the palate that might be affecting that, but... Mm. Um, that citrusy apple, um, but just that, that, that cut grass on the nose, on the palate, just, yeah, beautiful. Um, so the reason why it's called Synergy, um, going back to what I was talking about where, um, Andrew focuses on single vineyard wines, uh, I mean, they have... I think it's two or three. Uh, sorry, let me have a look at my numbers here. Um, oh, is it gone? Uh, yeah, so they've got two single vineyard semions, um, the OC. Uh, that stands for uh, Oakey Creek, not Orange County. Um, it's probably near where you are, so I'm it up. Um, although, I, to be honest, I don't know California geography, so you could <laughs> correct me on that. Um, but uh, Oakey Creek is uh, one of the original areas uh, that was put under vine in the Hunter Valley. Um, and sort of late, no, sorry, mid uh, 19th century, uh, 1850s, I think, was when the vines first planted there. And some of those vines are still there. Um, maybe not the Semillon ones, but um, there are some very, very old Shiraz vines. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, so the other one is the Braymore Vineyard. Um, and I don't exactly know where that is in the valley. Uh, so they do single bottlings of, the, of single vineyard wines. Uh, and I've had the Braymore a long time ago. Uh, and it was beautiful. <clears throat> Absolutely lovely. Um Given that they are very selective on, on how those bottles get made, there's obviously a lot of fruit left over. Like they only pick the best. They only put the best in the bottle. Um, and so what to do with the rest of that fruit? It's either they can um, take the fruit and just throw it away or they can make a lower quality wine. Um, and so that's what they've done. So that's what the Synergy range is. They take the fruits from different vineyards, blend them, um, and you end up with a lower price. So again, so this is about $22 Australian a bottle. Uh, the single vineyard bottles, uh, about $35 to $40 Australian. Um, so there's a chunk of coin more um, for the single vineyard bottles. Uh, now in the grand scheme of things, that's not that expensive. Um, I mean, some of the... Uh, some of the single vineyard wineries here, um, yeah, it's, um, yeah, they get sort of 80, 90, 100, 120, 130 dollars Australian. Um, so 35, 40 dollars Australian for a single vineyard winery, uh, with such a focused winery, more verbiage on the bottle, more dollars, yeah, <laughs> typically. Um, but, um, yeah, so the, the whole idea of the synergy was to um, use more of the fruit uh, at, at, and price of a, a better price point or more accessible price point, not a better price point, more accessible price point. Um, so here in Australia, I mean, there's a lot of people who won't spend more than $10 on a bottle of wine. So $20 for a bottle of wine is pushing it. $35, not going to happen. Um, so... Bringing the price point down to $22, uh, if the way they've got to do that is to blend the leftover fruit, I'm okay with it, because it's delicious. Um, so, as I said, I mean, so, uh, Thomas Wines only do Shiraz and Semyon. That's all they do. And they focus on the two varietals that uh, the Hunter Valley is renowned for, Andrew is passionate about. Uh, supporting the hunter varietals and, and making 
uh, hunter style wines with those varietals and uh, look I think this is this is delicious I mean particularly for the money um, and I, I don't don't pretend I mean twenty two dollars is not nothing for me I mean that's not pocket change I mean that's that's a, a decent investment in a bottle of wine for me um, particularly to be just drinking it at lunchtime on a Wednesday um, but um, yeah it's um, it's delicious it's, and again it's why I wanted to share it with you it's um, I was so impressed in store uh, and still just as impressed sort of drinking it out of view of anybody else well other than you guys um, uh, but uh, sitting in the comfort of my own home not having to sort of display my reactions to bottle shop people standing there in front of me um, yeah it's it's delicious so um, as I said 2021 vintage which is what this is um, is uh, mostly sold out it's not available on Thomas Wines website um, but um, is available uh, the 22 vintage is now available um, so definitely check it out uh, whether it's whether you'll be able to get it in the US I don't know um, unfortunately uh, the postal uh, system won't allow me to send you a bottle, um, but uh, you might be able to find uh, some uh, some local Hunter Semyon uh, in uh, the shops close to you. And uh, I'd say absolutely try it if you can. Um, but um, for those of us uh, here locally in uh, Australia um, or in the UK, I know they, they export to the UK. Uh, if you find a bottle, definitely pick it up. Well worthwhile. Um, yeah, I'm really impressed. I'm looking forward to finishing this with uh, my wife tonight. Um, there will be a lovely aged cheddar uh, and some UAU French triple cream brie, I think. Um, and uh, yeah, it's going to be very, uh, very pleasant evening, I hope. Um, yeah, Thomas Wines Synergy Semion 2021. Absolutely worth it. Mm. All right, that's enough. I do have to go and pick the kids up from school at some point and uh, don't want to get booked for uh, <coughs> driving under the influence. Uh, so, thank you for joining me. I uh, hope that was a good introduction to uh, Hunter Valley Semyon. Uh, next week, next Wednesday, we're going to go again with uh, one of the, the sweet spot wines. So I was uh, at the bottle shop and saw a sneaky Delius focus for me. Delius 2019 Hunter Valley Shiraz. Uh, now I'm a big fan of Delius wines. Um, they uh, make lovely wines. Uh, their Sangiovese, uh, which isn't actually from the Hunter Valley, uh, the fruit's actually from down the Hilltops region uh, in uh, southern New South Wales. Um, they uh, oh, just beautiful. Um, and it's essentially my go-to local uh, Chianti. Um, I haven't had their Shiraz in a while. Um, I, I did a tasting at the Elias pre-COVID, so probably 2019, uh, and tried the Shiraz there, um, but I uh, haven't had it since. Um, so looking forward to cracking that um, and uh, tasting that next week. Um, so, yeah, tune in next week. Uh, same time next week as always and uh, yeah uh, any any further questions again thank you so it up uh, for joining me uh, it's been uh, great to uh, have your company and hopefully you can uh, join us next week um, yeah uh, no other questions um, yeah so bye Rosie she's gone to sleep so, uh, yeah. All right. Have a great day, everybody, or a great evening, uh, depending on where you are in the world. And uh, thanks very much for joining me. And uh, we'll see you next week.
Cheers.